Um, I'm going to introduce Carla Poole first, to my left. Um, Carla's previous career was as a musician. And when she gives her remarks, you'll see her musical self evolve and emerge uh, in her work today. She's currently in private practice as a child development specialist, working with children with autism and their families, and serves as an adjunct faculty at East Los Angeles Community College in their family and child development program. Carla has a wide background, background working directly with very young children and families. She's a former Bank Street faculty member. She's a former director of the infancy program and a coordinator of this very institute. And I have to say, we really miss Carla because she's <coughs> out there in California and not with us. Oh. <laughs> Somebody's phone keeps buzzing. I don't know. All right. Um, all right, so you can hear me, right? Okay, I miss Banks Street, obviously, very, very much. And I'm always happy to return to my roots. So, the question, what will babies be like in 2037? Is fanciful, and that it's a never-ending kind of thought process, and exacting. Charles Darwin confirmed that evolution happens, sometimes rapidly. So we know that babies will be different. Happily, much of babyness will remain the same. The inspiring developmental drive to grow and learn will continue. And there will not be no such thing as a baby. Only a baby and a family. A humble twist on Winnicott's brilliant thought. Current research confirms that there are more babies being born with neurological differences. Babies with challenges in sensory processing, communication, and other areas. This trend will most likely continue. These are the children and family with whom I now work. Toddlers who eventually received the diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder, and some who don't. And I will address their needs in this brief talk. Neurologically different children often experience the world in ways very differently than the way many of us experience the world. For instance, an adult with severe autism has written that her skin felt like it was on fire during childhood. Other children may understand the world through mental images instead of language. Sensory systems may be under or over responsive, hearing every word spoken throughout a house, or jumping for hours to act. Yet, their need to feel known and their capacity for loving relationships is no different from any other children. The quality of a child's life depends on the synchronicity of the dance that they experience with their caregivers. <coughs> This particular dance requires more from the adult partner. And how many of us, us infant toddler practitioners, will learn this dance? Perhaps a vignette will help to illustrate. When I began working with Joshua and his family, he was a two-year-old child who did not speak and preferred <laughs> solitary, repetitive play but he did vocalize very melodically. First, I sang to him. He enjoyed that. And then I listened to him sing. Over many months, I imitated and expanded on his singing. He began to sing with me, matching my pitch and rhythm. <coughs> Still no language. We begin to sing together. After six months, patience, is required of singing the same few songs, I decided to sing a familiar song but transpose it to a different key. So we went e ya e e ya e e ya e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e. And by that time, he was matching my e s and my e's. But that day, I went e ya e e ya e e ya e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e
and he followed my pattern, my musical progression. Well, while we were in the middle of this fun play, while we were digging in a sandbox, of course, um, his older brother tried to interrupt us. Now, sibling rivalry can be a great motivator, <laughs> right? So little Joshua did not want me to pay attention to his older brother, Daniel. So he continued on and transposed to the very next key independently. Right. This child now has language, and he can count to like 130. But he has meaningful language. Baby spider, mommy spider, mommy come back. So it's really blossoming. Now this child, I believe, used music which enters the brain through multiple pathways uh, to create a connection, the connectivity in a lot of these uh, children with autism. It's the connectivity that's not there between areas of the brain. And I think that he, through this alternative route, somehow managed his, to connect his expressive language with other areas of his brain. So what did I do? First, I observed and thought about how he experienced the world. Gradually, I utilized my deepening understanding of brain development and music therapy to create experiences that Joshua embraced happily. Pleasure, shared pleasure. I remained playful, patient, and hopeful. And for, jo and for Joshua, music helped him to neurologically decode language. So I believe that many babies and their families in 212, and even more so, will need in 2037, will need practitioners like yourselves who are eager to learn across disciplines, to use your own creative strengths, and to learn from babies and families. So congratulations to you, the audience, for being on the forefront of the expanding role of specialists by ten attending the 25th Infancy Institute at Bangshree College and preparing yourselves for the babies who you know are coming soon <coughs> to your local neighborhood. <laughs> After all, I do live in Hollywood. 